Power 7 Podcast. Good morning, good morning. It's your boy, the almighty Nicodemus, back in the building once again for another weekly rant of the Power 7 Podcast. Shouting out my 1 to 100 listeners, letting you know if you got two arms, two legs, and one head, you are truly blessed if you can get out here and make it happen for you and yours. Whether you like doing what you do or not, just be blessed that you can do it because there's a lot of people out here who can't take care of themselves or the ones that they love. Once again, it's the Power 7 Podcast. Let's get into it. So, Method Man performs Hot 97 in Summer Jam and says, I ain't doing that shit to them no more. The generation divide is too big, it's too wide, there's too much of a gap. And I say, yeah, Method Man, I agree with you. The generation divide or the generation gap is big. Um, and that ain't your fault, and that ain't the generation's fault, and that ain't the crowd's fault. I don't blame anybody. Maybe, maybe I can blame, you know, the person who put the show together but I can't blame the fans and I can't blame Method Man. And here's the reason why. When it comes to music, whether it's hip hop, soul, or R&B, when it comes to music, there is always have been and is a generational gap. Look, I liked George Clinton when I was hearing my parents play George Clinton or hearing... Uh, Teddy Pendergrass or Luther Vandross, Patti LaBelle, whoever. I like them. I like some of their songs when I was when I was younger. But I can't imagine if I was 17, 18, that if they showed up at the radio show concert, that this radio show usually played the music that me and my friends listened to, not the music that my parents listened to, but I'd be excited or happy about seeing Patti LaBelle or Luther Vandross like that. I mean, I wouldn't be unexcited, but I wouldn't be enthusiastic and and jumping around and going crazy for them. And so I think that was an issue. You know, I don't expect my kids to be enthralled with the music that I like. And the only reason my kids are going to know about that music, and I'm not going to say I expect them to know my music, but... The only reason they will know my music or they do know my music is because I play my music and I tell them about things. But I, even if, even with that being said, that doesn't mean someone like Method Man is going to get that excitement that whoever these kids are into, you know, they, they're, they're the rappers or singers or whatever that they like, they don't see them. They see them different than Method Man. Method Man is their parents' music. No, and no, Method Man isn't too old to be performing or rocking out. But that's not his venue. Summer Jam, Hot 97, isn't Method Man's thing. You know, if that's... Yeah, let him rock out. That's not Method Man's thing, and I'm not finna knock Method Man for not wanting to do it. I understand, you know. They have festivals and and things like that for someone like Method Man. You got the Roots Picnic, and you have the South by Southwest. You have all these other things that can that provides the venue or the audience that want to hear Method Man are going to attend. But to expect Method Man to really capture the attention of older teenagers and young 20 year olds, you know, it's kind of a myth. We share this space called social media with our children and sometimes our children's children. And we expect them to have the same point of view or the same vibrations that we have as adults. And that just doesn't make sense. We didn't have it with our parents. And for some reason on social media, we have these rose tinted glasses as the elders that the kids are supposed to see things as we see it or they're supposed to see things the way we saw when we were kids well no it don't work like that it ain't just it ain't gonna work like that so i think uh, we need to start backing off and giving them grace 
you know, if kids want to volunteer or they want to purchase a ticket to get in the ass whooping, and I'm using ass whooping as a metaphor, but if they want to purchase a ticket to get one, you know, by all means, whoop that ass. But we shouldn't be giving out volunteer ass whoopings to some of these kids because they don't like what we like or they are not into it like we are. That doesn't make sense. So we need to get off of that. And so moving right along, which brings me to we're pretty much my last point. I got something to say to all these cats that's been on this uh, this new craze or trend, and they want to try to say music is not subjective. They keep trying to these it's some motherfuckers out here that she's trying to push this narrative that music ain't subjective. That they are trying to craft this way of looking at music as you have to be boxed in and what's considered good or what's considered the greatest. Me personally, I don't think there is a greatest MC ever. There can't be because just because I like Nas and you like Jay-Z, we can argue with it and some people like debating that type of shit. But at the end of the day, at the end of that debate, you're not going to be able to prove to me that Jay-Z is better than Nas if I like Nas better. No matter what. Because then if you're trying to do that, you're trying to regulate an MC to a box or a rapper to a box, not even an MC. You're trying to regulate this rapper inside this box and saying these are the specifications which makes you the best rapper or the dopest rapper and what makes you better. This, 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 this. No, that's your opinion. And that's what makes that you like that rapper. That's not what makes them definitively the best. And there's some people out here that's trying to force their POV or trying to say, this is what it is. No, bro. That's what you say it is. If somebody thinks Boosie is better than us, you ain't going to change that person's mind. You're not going to convince them of anything else, no matter how hard you try. Because you can't relate to that person's experience or how they connect to music. Once you start trying to place a rapper or music in a box to say this is what it is and this is what makes it good, then you take all the joy, the fun, and the feeling and the connection that people get from music. And I don't understand why some people want to be like that. Well, maybe I do understand. People like to be right. People want everybody to know that they're right and that that their point of view is the way it should be and the way it has to be. And I'm just a person that is not going to agree with that. So... The only thing I can say to that is please, please, if you're one of those brothers out here trying to spread this music, it's not subjective narrative and what's good and what's bad. Yo, get off, get off your soapbox. Stop. Talk about what you like. And if you want to debate with some people, let that be known. But don't sit up here trying to spread your point of view like it's the gospel truth because it ain't. Music is enjoyed for the listener and what they connect to and what they relate to, not what you relate to. You got artists for that. You got people that vibe with you more now. So on that note, I'm going to end it with this. Be blessed. Because if you got two arms, two legs, and one head, you are truly blessed to make it happen for you and yours and the ones that you love. Once again, it's the almighty Nicodemus Power 7 Podcast. Peace.